everybody. Welcome back. Today we're going to work on how to paint with washable markers. And to give us something to color, I'm also going to do a quick demo on um, drawing emojis, which I'm sure many of you have tried before or have practiced from time to time. Um, but even though that's what we'll be coloring in today, you can use this painting coloring technique for really anything. Um, including our next video project, which is um, drawing and shading in um, gems and jewels, which should be fun. Um, if you're wondering why in the world you would paint with markers, uh, why not just color with markers the normal way? Um, keep it up in mind because I think this technique looks really cool when it's all finished and it's a great way to add in an ombre kind of dark to light fade. Um, if that's something that you're looking to add to some of your artwork. So without further ado, uh, let's take a look at our supplies. For this project, you will need some markers, a pencil and eraser, a Sharpie or a pen, and possibly a black or dark colored crayon. But most importantly, you will need heavy paper. You can use watercolor paper if you have it, or another thick paper like cardstock or even paper from a sketchbook. Printer or copy paper just doesn't stand up well to water. This was my test on printer paper and as you can see, it's really not great. For the painting stage of this project, you will need just a little bit of clean water and a small paintbrush. A piece of paper towel is good to have on hand, but you can get by without it. I wanted to start my emoji with a really good circle, and this cup was the perfect size for my paper. You can trace any circular object that's about the right size for what you need, or you can just draw one freehand if that's something that you're good at. I made a little mistake and traced a little too close to the edge, but a quick flip over and I'm back in action. The last thing I'm going to do before I draw on the face is draw two super light lines. One vertically straight down the middle and one horizontally straight across the middle. These will be my guides to make sure I put the parts of the face in the right spots so it looks a lot like the original emoji. This is the emoji that I want to draw. When I look closely, I can see that the winking eye is resting right on that horizontal line but the open eye dips a little bit below. The tongue is centered with a little space between it and the upper lip. With those things in mind, I can start drawing using that middle line to draw the winking eye setting just on it and the open eye that dips a little bit below. After I've drawn my mouth, I can draw in my tongue right there in the center, making sure to leave a little space between the top of the tongue and the top line of the mouth. You always want to take a close look to make sure everything's where you want it to be before you start tracing in Sharpie. With my Sharpie, I'm also going to fill in the inside of the mouth and the pupil and anything else that needs to be black. As always, when you're done tracing in Sharpie, you need to erase the extra pencil line. The most common problem with watercolor painting or painting with markers is bleeding. You don't want the colors to bleed through like they did from the tongue into the face on my smiley face here. If we use crayon to trace those black lines before we paint, we can use it like a wall to keep the colors inside the lines. On this one, I'm gonna focus on keeping the eyes white and keeping the pink or red of the tongue inside the tongue area. 
I'm also going to trace around the outside of the emoji to make sure that that yellow doesn't bleed out into the rest of the paper. Now I'm ready to add color. I'm just going to outline each section with the color that I want it to be. It's best if you put a thick line or maybe a double line around each part so that you have lots of color to work with. Once I've added the color, now I can add the water. I'm just going to rub and scrub along the edge of that line to pick up some of the color. And once I get around the whole outside of the emoji face, I can start to pull it in. Notice that once I had wet the whole outline, I didn't add more water unless it was getting really dry. I wanna make sure that I still have lots of color in the water as I spread it around, and adding more water is gonna make the color turn out much lighter. Just like when we're using watercolor, before I switch to the red, I'm gonna rinse out my brush to make sure that we don't mix up the colors. I started from the lightest color to the darkest color so that if I did accidentally get a little yellow in the red, it wouldn't be super noticeable. At least not as noticeable as if I got red into the yellow. We might be tempted to go back in and try to smooth out the colors, but that irregular color having dark around the outside and it being lighter on the inside is what makes it look like watercolor. And the more times we go over it, the more likely it is to lose its brightness and start to get a little pale. I also wanted to show you the blushing emoji to look at some of the other ways that you can use the markers and spread out the colors. So of course I drew it first using that horizontal line as a guide, put my winking eyes resting right on it. And like always, I traced with Sharpie and then erased the extra pencil line. Now we're ready to add some color. I'm gonna start the same way by outlining the whole thing in orange marker. You'll see at the end that I probably should have put a slightly thicker line to get a brighter yellow, but that's okay. I'm also gonna put two dots of red, one on either side, right about where I want the cheeks to blush. In hindsight, pink probably would spread out better, but the red worked okay. Of course, I'm not going to outline these in crayon because I really want them to spread out and bleed. At first, I'm going to leave a little bit of a circle around the red dots just to give me space to spread that red out before it starts mixing with the yellow. Once the yellow is all done, I'm gonna start in the middle of that red dot and slowly circle it out into the yellow. Once we get into that wet yellow color, it is going to start to bleed and spread out. The little red circle that remains on the inside of the blush is the reason why I said I should have used pink. Pink is a little bit less pigmented so it spreads out a little bit better. The red really sticks to the page, so remember that if you're trying to use that for anything. The next time I do this, I think I'm going to experiment with painting the blushing circles first to see if maybe that is more successful at picking up that red color. Ta-da! Here are my three finished emojis. I'm really proud of them but now it's your turn. I cannot wait to see which emojis you pick, so make sure you email me a picture of whatever you make so that I can see your finished product.